Hey guys, welcome back to Watch With Us. My name is John Keel, and today I'm gonna to talk about some really rare Seiko watches. Now I'm not a Seiko connoisseur. I've always spent my career in the very high-end side of the industry, and then recently over the last couple of years got involved with micro brands, and I really never got heavily uh, mentally or emotionally invested into Seikos. However, I do have an enormous amount of respect for the brand, and I've found myself over the last couple of years liking a handful of the models a bit more, watching a couple of videos, not many, and then of course, over time, you start to accumulate a few things if you like to collect watches. And I've ended up with a couple of very rare Seikos that I really wasn't even set out to search for, but just kind of fell upon my lap and I've acquired them over time. Now the first one I'm gonna show you is the least rare of the three that I own. However, I'm blown away by the way these things have increased in value. But number one on the list is the Gen 2 Seiko Monster SRP313 AKA Dracula. Interesting story. Back when I was in retail many years ago, I actually met a gentleman who came into the store who was looking to buy a Ulysse Narden by the name of Mark Frankel. Yes, you know Mark Frankel from Long Island Watch. So Mark and I, because of our love of watches, became very fast friends. He ended up purchasing a Ulysse Narden from me. And it was during that time he was telling me about Long Island Watch and about the Seiko business and the Japanese domestic market and some of the harder to come by monsters and I took a look at his site and I told him I love the look of the Dracula. So he ended up bringing the watch by and I bought it from him and this goes back maybe 10 years ago, if not more. Fast forward to about a year ago, I was on one of the Facebook groups and I posted a picture of good old Dracula here and just put it in the Facebook group and one guy had mentioned how the values of these things have gone insane. So naturally, out of curiosity, I looked on eBay and some other places. Now a watch that I think cost me maybe $200, if not less, now is selling for $700, $800, $1,000, $1,500. There's even one guy on Chrono24 who's got it listed for over $5,000. So if there's any of you out there who are willing to pay $5,000 for my Seiko Dracula, you know where to find me. Shoot me an email. It is more than yours. Number two is a watch from 1991. It is the Seiko Made for Honda F1 Grand Prix Lap Timer. Another interesting story. A friend of mine, Chris Thorne, who has a YouTube channel called The Watch Lounge, posted a picture of this watch that he had bought this on eBay and I, I started messaging him, what the heck is that thing? I've never seen anything like it. Now there's not a whole lot of information out there. What I can find is that it was designed by the famous auto and Seiko designer, Giorgetto Giugiaro. And if I'm not mistaken, this watch is from 1991 and of course, obviously made for Honda and their F1 Grand Prix racing team. So I told Chris how much I liked this watch or how cool I thought it was. And a few months later he said, you know, I've had my run with this watch, would you like it? And, and of course I wasn't gonna turn it down. It's a really wild looking piece. Probably not something that I'd wear on a daily basis, but I just think it's so funky and unique and cool that I love having it in my collection. And last and certainly not least is the Seiko Pogue 6139-6000. Now I know you're saying to yourself, well John, Pogues are everywhere. You can buy them for four, $500 any day of the week. You're absolutely right. However, this one is a little bit different. You'll notice looking at the day and the date that this has the Japanese day wheel. The day of the week is in English as well as Japanese. After doing a little bit of research, I found that it is quite possible that this reference is the very first JDM or Japanese domestic market Seiko ever. This particular one is not on its original bracelet. It is not uncommon for the bracelets at that time, which had hollow end links, to break or to fall apart. So this does have a Seiko bracelet, but it's from a later model. The other thing that's a little bit questionable about this particular watch is the white chapter ring. Most of the JDM Pogues from 1969, which this is from, have a black chapter bezel on the inside of the crystal. However, I did speak to the original owner of this watch. Now, I purchased this watch from a local gentleman who happened to find out that I was in the watch business and showed me a handful of his old pieces, and I fell for this one and I ended up buying it from him. But he said he purchased this watch brand new in Japan in 1969 on a trip, and he's never, ever, ever had anything done to it, serviced or anything, with the exception of getting a new bracelet put on it back in the 80s. 
So did this watch come with the white chapter ring? I guess no one will ever know. As I've asked a couple of Seiko experts, they said they've seen them before, but they always assumed that the ring was replaced with a chapter ring from a different model. In any case, it's really a pleasure to have some of these great watches in a watch collection. Whether I wear them a lot or not, it's really cool to own. Who knows, at some point I might trade them in or get rid of them for something else, but for me personally, that's part of my watch journey. I love to hunt for certain watches. I love to find them. I love to acquire them, wear them, and eventually let them go to other people who love watches. But for now, I'm gonna hold on to them, and I hope you guys enjoyed the quick video. Some cool watches you don't get to often see. And as always, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I thank you guys for watching. There's a little bell down there by the subscribe button. If you hit that bell, it'll alert you when a new video is published. Don't forget to follow our Instagram page, which is run by our very own Ricardo Simi. He does a phenomenal job with that Instagram, and that is at Watch With Us channel, so go over, check that out. And as always, thank you for taking your time. Any comments, any questions, any information on some of these uh, cool pieces that I don't have a ton of information on would be more than welcome. And let us know what rare Seikos that you have in your collection. And if you send us some photos, we'll feature them over on Instagram. Drop your messages below and we will talk to you guys very soon. Thank you.